Hi everyone, and welcome to this introductory video of the PostgreSQL Basics module, a set of videos and exercises that'll help you kind of get a basic understanding of Postgres and how to work with databases. So PostgreSQL, as its name suggests, is an SQL database server. So it's one of many SQL databases, ser database servers, including Oracle, MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, and others. In turn, SQL databases are just one type of relational database. Nowadays, currently, I don't think there are any relational databases that are not SQL databases, but technically, SQL databases are a subset of relational databases, but you can just think of them as basically the same thing. And relational databases are just one of many different types of databases in general. So there could be key value stores uh, databases, search engine databases like Elasticsearch is a very popular one, wide column stores like Cassandra, graph databases, and others. So relational databases are just one type of database. There can be many others. And let me just show you that with an example from the database engines website. So here are the rankings of all of them. Here on the left, you can see there are different types. If I go to the relational database management systems, and you can see the rankings there, and you can see kind of PostgreSQL is kind of a up and coming database server, but you can see there's others. So there's like key value stores, and you can see Redis is the high one there, and so on. So as you can see, there are many different types of database servers. So a database is just a collection of logically related records. And let me give you an example to help clarify what I mean by logically related records. And imagine a developer who works on a number of projects, and she stores all the files for all those projects on her desktop. So there's no division. Everything's there accessible instantly because everything's on her desktop. As opposed to a a developer who stores things kind of in directory. So if she has a project on the Austin Museum of Art, she's working on back-end development for that. All that code and data documentation would be in a folder, and all the work she's doing for some analytics project would be in another folder. And if she has a hobby of guitar, all that would be in a separate folder. So she's kind of divided up these files into logically related files. So that's what I mean by logically related, that things are grouped. This awesome museum stuff's logically related, it's grouped together. So imagine we are designing the system for an art museum. Well, one database, one set of logically related records might be that of the holdings of the museum. So the different pieces of art that are in the museum, the artists involved, when they were information about how they were acquired or whatever, all those might be in one database. And that would be separate from information about the gift shop. So the gift shop would have items for sale, who are the vendors that we get the stuff from, information about the sales that we've done. So things along those lines, those are separate. Those are separate. They're logically related and different from the holdings. So information about employees, so things like, you know, what's the tax information about the employees? What are the hours that they worked? And other information about employees. Patrons, who are they? How much did they donate? Things along those lines. We could store all this information in one huge database, so just glom everything in there. Artist information, events, what's happening, gift store vendor information, what books do we have in the bookstore, what are the different pieces of art we have in the museum? What's the employee tax information? But this doesn't look like a good organization. This is the equivalent of keeping everything on the desktop and where we want to group things into logically related groups. So we get something like this. This also helps in that information that if people need to access the gift shop database, you know, we can kind of restrict them to that gift shop and not have them have any access to the employee's database. So this is a design we're looking for and what is meant by being logically related. So databases are a collection of logically related records. 
A database server, on the other hand, is a piece of software. It's an application that's running on a machine that manages multiple databases. And by manage, I mean that we can create databases in there. We can ways of inserting data into that database and ways of querying the database to get that information back. So here we might have a whole, just one database server that can hold all those databases for that museum. Sometimes we might think of a database server also as kind of the application that's running as well as the hardware. So we might refer to a database server as that kind of group. But almost always it's really, kind of, that's kind of the shorthand. Really when we think database server, it's a piece of software that's always running on some machine somewhere. So it's correct to say I'm using a PostgreSQL database server, and it'd be a little dodgy to say I'm using a PostgreSQL database when if you're referring to the software, or I downloaded the PostgreSQL database, you're downloading the application that's going to be the PostgreSQL database server. And um, PostgreSQL is a Relational Database Management System, or RDBMS. You don't need to memorize this, but I just wanted to throw it out there in case you hear it again from someone. So it's a Relational Database Management System, and we've seen that, that there are databases, which are a collection of logically related records, and then there are relational databases. And a relational database is a database where all information is represented as relations, and that may not mean much to you. So you might say relations can be precisely defined mathematically. And sure, that's fine. You could look up the articles and see what that means. But the way that makes sense is that if you can represent information as a set of tables, like all the information you need is a set of tables, then it's a relational database. So a relational database consists of one or more tables. And by table, I mean kind of the traditional idea of what a table is. So this idea of a relational database was proposed by Edgar Codd in 1970, so quite a while ago when he worked at IBM. And the table idea is just as you imagine a table to be, that the columns represent some sort of attributes about an object, and the rows represent the object itself. So here's an example. So we have some students. And the columns represent these attributes. So we have a student ID attribute, a first name, last name, phone, and all the in other information we need about students. And any particular row of that table represents a particular student, a particular object. So we have row 222, or with student ID 222, with first name Becky, last name Hedberg, and so on. So our concept of what a table is is exactly the same as what a table is in a relational database. So a database can contain more than one table. So let's add a table here of courses that someone could take. And again, the columns are attributes, like the course number, the title, and how many credits, and any other information we might need for that course. And each row represents a particular instance. So we have Math 200 being the discrete course with its three credits, and so on. And let's add another table to our database. So this one's the current courses that are being offered. The CRN is the course registration number. There's the course that it is, the section number, time, days, and instructor. And we can see that we have two instances of that CSI 340 being offered, one section one and one section two. So we have two representations of that in the table. And let's add one more table, which is the student schedule one, which links, well, what students are taking which courses. So I have a question for you. So I'd like to know what courses, and by courses I mean the title of the course, like discrete, linear, or whatever, is Becky Hedberg taking? So just pause the video here and see if you can figure it out. I, th I think you will. All right, so let's see if you did it. I'm kind of thinking that almost everyone can do this. So Becky Hedberg we see here is student 222, and we have the student schedule here. So 222, student 222 is taking 86173, and we looked in the current courses table, and we see 86173 is music 214, and we see music 214 is a guitar course. And let's see if there's any others. Well, yes, we see that 222 is taking 85660, 
and 85660 is CSI375, and CSI375 is machine learning. And finally, we see 222 is taking 82059. 82059 is Music 370. Music 370 is Delta Blues. So Becky Hedberg is taking guitar, machine learning, and Delta Blues. So if you could kind of understand all this intuitively by working through this, you'll see where we're going eventually with relational databases, that we're having all this information represented in tables, and we're going to learn how we can combine this information from multiple tables to generate a query, to get the answer for a query. And again, if we can represent everything as a set of tables, then it's a relational database. So think this is one relational databases that have four tables in it, and a database server can have multiple relational databases in it. SQL is a, just a standard language for storing, manipulating, and retrieving data in a relational database. And as I said before, every relational database is, now uses SQL. So it's just SQL is just a way of how to interact with a database server. And that's where that post the SQL of PostgreSQL comes from. So PostgreSQL is a relational database management system that uses SQL as its standard language. And that's what we'll be working with in this module. So this module, it's going to be a hands-on introduction to PostgreSQL. We'll learn how to install it, how we design tables, what are good ways of designing tables. Later we'll learn even better ways, but at least we'll start getting kind of a handle on how to design tables to put information in. How do we insert data into those tables? And finally, how are we querying that information back? So that's what we'll be covering in this module. I'm hoping you have some fun. Thanks so much. Talk to you later. Bye.